Yeah, I'm really proud of how we handled, um, especially the beam rotation specifically. We had kind of had a lot of ups and downs. It's a little, not necessarily more added pressure, but it can kind of seem that way sometimes whenever you do have a mistake like that. Obviously, it's nobody's fault at the end of the day. We're still a team, and so I'm really proud of that. We continue to keep the energy up and keep the momentum going throughout that entire rotation. It's kind of indicative of the whole season, too, though, or the start to the season, at least, in that you yes. really need to rally, and you know, somebody has to make a stop with them kind of thing. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we always say, like, it's – what happens next, the next person up, you know, really just picking up where we left off so we just don't have a divot in the road, I guess. Coach kind of mentioned uh, frustrating leak points on the board there. I felt like you guys could have put up a higher score. Do you guys feel that way, or if you're next time out, are you going to kind of attack it more? Yeah, I, I think sometimes you can get kind of in your head a little bit once you, like, look at the score thinking that, like, oh, I guess that could have been higher, or, like, uh, I thought this was better than what it was, but you really have to just dial in being, make sure that it doesn't get into your head so that you don't make that mistake again. After, fr after Friday's meet, Jay said that he could sense a little bit of a fatigue from you guys. I mean, how have y'all you, you taken these last few days to kind of get more refreshed? Yeah, thankfully we have a tremendous staff and trainers here and there being able to help us at whatever we need, whether that's recovery, whether that's fueling or hydration. And so it's really important to take those steps to recovery because we do still have a lot of the season to go. What about the mental fatigue? I think that's kind of what he was talking about. Just you went through a lot, you know, it's four weeks yeah. in. It seems like you guys have already been through a lot. Yes, definitely a lot in these past month, really. But like I said, it's a marathon, not a sprint. You really have to make sure that we're not kind of like over analyzing too much too early in the season because we do still have a lot of work to continue. Who stepped up that you've seen that you're, you're like really thankful for right now? Um, I think this whole team has handled this adversity so incredibly well. We have such a phenomenal team here at LSU and specifically I would say Haley. She's just so incredibly consistent and just so like very businesslike, has so much poise in her gymnastics inside and out of the gym. That's something I look up to a lot. Yeah, has she really kind of stepped into that role? It seems that, you know, she was kind of destined to for it along with Kaya, but now that it's just her out on the floor, does it feel like there's more of an emphasis from her, or is she just kind of quietly doing her thing? I think um, a lot of the time she does lead by example, and I think she is starting to speak up here and there a lot, and I think that's just what our whole team needs is for every person to put in a little bit more so that we can continue to elevate our team. Talking more about Haley, she got her sixth perfect 10 last Friday. Does she ever see so many? Never, never. It's so, it's every time she goes up there, I have so much confidence in her. I love watching her gymnastics and her personality is really just the icing on the cake for that. So on, on an individual basis for you, what are some of the challenges of going from two events all your freshman year and now you're doing all around this year? Um, there's not necessarily like that big of a change, I would say. It's more just knowing that at the, at the end of the day, my gymnastics is still the same. Obviously, you can get like that physical fatigue along with the mental fatigue as well, but it's really just pushing because it's for the team and it's not for an individual role. How has it been so far compared to your expectations? How are you feeling physically, mentally after four weeks of you know, stepping into that larger role? Yeah, I mean, we have, we have some ups and downs, obviously, as you guys have seen these past couple weeks, but overall, I'm really proud of how I've handled everything so far, and I'm really just, I just want to put my best foot forward for this team because I think we need that. And after Kaya goes down, does that change anything for you? Does that change your mindset? Does that change your approach to meets? Or is it basically still the same? Um, I think it's still the same no matter what happens. Obviously, we like to say that our gymnastics is still the same no matter what the circumstances are. So I'm really trying to keep that in my head as we go throughout the season. However, um, I think it's more of a team aspect because as someone like Kaya does go down, essentially, you want to make sure that you're doing your absolute best because it's for Kaya, for the team, and so on. Do you think you'll compete in the all around all year, or is that something you scale back on maybe when you're through? I, I haven't had too much lineup talk recently, but as the season progresses, I think that's what we'll start to see. Is it kind of, I mean, do you feel like, yeah, they're going to have to have my, my scores, and so I'm going to kind of have to step up a little bit more? I think it's not necessarily about like who, it's about what whoever goes up, what is the score that they can take. So it doesn't matter who goes up, as long as we get the scores that we need to, then I'm perfectly fine with whatever they need me to do. But did you see it as more of a challenge to you? Like now you're the two, like basically you're the, you know, you're the best, second best person on the team right now. Um, I would just like to say that it's, it doesn't matter who goes up, like I said again, it's just whoever can get up there and hit, that's, that's the person who needs to go up. Gotcha. Tell me about Sierra. Uh, just kind of a spark plug, I guess, that 
Absolutely. Sierra has one of the most like ecstatic energies I've ever met. She is such just a ball of light and every single time she goes up there, she just pulls you into she pulls you into her floor routine. It's so special. She's worked so hard this entire last season and the preseason and now making that first lineup this entire this entire season so far and it's just it's magnetic watching her every single time. So that's pretty much her all the time, right? That's her in the practice. Yes. Yes, her in practice, her even outside of the gym too. She's such a ball of light and uh, her energy is, I don't know what the word is. It's um, infectious. Yes, thank you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and uh, you talked about resiliency and for you, uh, after you had that fall in your double Arabian first pass, uh, you just literally shook it off and then went through and uh, hit the rest of them. And uh, basically just how did you uh, manage to keep that fall from impacting the rest of the routine? Um, we talk a lot in the gym saying that what happens next because you never know essentially what you may have to count and what you don't. And so after I made that mistake, I knew that I had to continue the routine. You know, there wasn't any stopping and trying again. So it's really what I can control now. I can't control what happened 10 seconds ago, but I know I can control something that's going to happen in 15 seconds. So. Are you going to Arkansas? This week? Yeah. Yes. So being back on the Really excited. Arkansas is um, it's a great team. We're gonna be they're gonna put our best foot best foot forward and I know we will too. So you've had a couple of road meets already, you know, early in the year. I guess does does it help to have them early and out of the way or what are your thoughts? I think it kinda helps getting a feel for it, especially when we weren't in school and getting kind of like in the routine of it. Now we started school the this past week obviously and so it'll be a little bit of a challenge kind of navigating the both of those two, but thankfully we have everything we could possibly need for that. Does it feel nice to have a monkey off your back and have a win in the win column? I know it doesn't really mean much, but it's got to be good. It, it, do, it does feel good, especially um, all of the work that we've put in for these past few weeks and these past couple months. So it's one under our belt, and there's many more to come. I know you probably hate this, but I'm going to ask you again. Uh, the comparisons to your sister. Like, I don't necessarily see it in the gymnastics, but I see it in the celebration. <laughs> Do people tell you that? Is that? That's actually a new one. I haven't heard the celebration one so far, so thank you. I'll take it. That's when I see it the most. No, I mean, I, I think the, the only thing that was really out of the ordinary was, was having three meets in seven days early on uh, like this. It's not that unusual. We've done it in years past where you have three meets in eight days or something along those lines. But, um, you know, now we're able to get back into kind of a normal, normal cadence of you know, how we train in between competitions and, and things of that nature. So I'm just glad we're past it. I'm glad you know, we went through a lot in the process that was unanticipated, but um, just glad to be back into a kind of a normal rhythm or getting into one now. Yeah, you talked a lot about the mental fatigue and even physical yeah. fatigue for this team. What do you think? Well, I, I felt better. I mean, I, you know, I, I kind of go, I, I know that whatever, whatever I feel, they're probably feeling double. So when, when I'm tired from uh, those road trips, I can only imagine where they are. And so I kind of gauge their rest on, you know, on that. I felt better and, and, and everybody came in the gym yesterday. The reports we got from Jenny and from them as they came in, they were like, we feel pretty good. And, and so I, I think so. I think lack of travel over the, over the weekend helps that. And, and uh, so, yeah, I think we're, you know, I think we're coming, we're getting back to a kind of a place of homeostasis or whatever, you know, and just kind of leveling out a little bit from an emotional standpoint and, and, uh, and, and moving forward after all the, all the drama of the last couple of weeks. Homeostasis. Yeah, it's a good word. It's a good word. Equilibrium, maybe, if you will. I was going to say normal, but I know everybody hates it. Yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, it's it's nice it's nice to get the win. I I, I was I was a little um, a little disappointed in the in the in the the way that you know we weren't able to put all four events together, um, but we did enough to to get a conference win against a very solid team. That team finished fifth in the country last year and and returned everyone. So. Um, you know, it felt it felt good. Uh, I think we certainly know where we can improve, and and um, and again, I you know, I I looked back on it and thought, well, maybe you know, it, it had a little bit to do with the 
the emotional and mental drain that had kind of gotten all over us uh, for several days, but um, a little bit of fatigue. And, and then there's growth that has to happen too. You know, you guys were talking to Aaliyah. She's got to be allowed to grow into this role. I said that after the meet too. You, we've got to be patient and, and allow her to, to, it's a big deal. Doing four events is entirely different animal than doing three. If you talk to gymnasts, they, they, the, 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 the mental load that it takes on them, it just is different. And um, a lot of them have had to go through that growth. Haley went through that growth. Her, her sister, Sarah, uh, the first year we tried to make her an all-arounder, she would make a mistake some place or another, and we couldn't figure it out. We keep having to pull back and go to three events. We don't have the luxury of pulling Aaliyah out of an event right now, so she's still got to be able to still be able to do that but we've got to be patient and let her grow into that role and get get more and more comfortable and she is she's she's improving as she goes yeah i wanted to ask you about Aaliyah, the, those little mi missteps can you attribute it to something like what was, you, you know, know i thought i saw a little fatigue in all of them um uh in in the missouri meet um it, it may have had something to do with that it may have been you know if you look at it she you know there's the mistakes have moved and they're on one event or they're on another and then it changes week to week and that usually means that it's not a physical thing it's it's a um, you know it's between the ears in a lot of in a lot of cases and and you just have to yeah, they got to be battle tested and go through that process and it's not out of it's not out of character at all for it's a it's a normal thing um, for a lot of athletes to go through and and uh, when you look at what we've done so far as a, on the whole, it's really not out of line with very many years in recent past. It's just, uh, I think it's, uh, it feels different because we, we lost one of our stars and, you know, it, it, it feels different. But when you look at the scoring, the way our scoring is tracking, it's, it's not all that out of line with a lot of years around here at LSU. So. What's, what's impressed you most? Aaliyah, yeah. oh, just her enthusiasm for the new role that she has and, and her, um, she's, you can see her growing into a leader and, and the things that she says and, and the way she's trying to go about her business. She's very serious about being better, but she's not doing so at the expense of that gregarious, awesome personality that she has that she just exudes when she performs and draws people in. Um, but she's, she's working hard. She's embraced a lot of change. She's doing... Um, some new skills that she hadn't done very much in the past and, and um, has really embraced the role that, that she's now playing. That's the biggest thing is that her presence has grown, not just the gymnastics role, but her overall presence when she's in the room and when we're in, in there together, you, can, you, can, you know she's there and, and that's, that's just good. And that's good as part of the maturation process, I guess. How impressed are you with the way that uh, Tori Tatum has stepped up? Awesome. Awesome, and I, I hope it's been a shot in the arm for her so that she knows she can, she can bring that level of execution into the gym every day. The only thing that had prevented her from getting into, into the lineups was consistency in training. Like she would show us flashes of that, but we didn't see it all the time. And I, you know, I'd wanted her to show that um, for, for quite some time. So the, I think it's been a real good motivator for her. She's gotten in there and, and done, done well and, and you know, increased her score week over week. And I don't, it's not even about the score. The execution of the routine that she did on Friday was better than the one she did on Monday. Um, I would argue it was better than a quarter of a tenth better, you know, but I don't, that doesn't mean that, um, you know, the judges were out of line. It just means that I, I think based on her capability, it was significantly better on Friday than it was on Monday. So, you know, Tori's, a, Tori's an accomplished athlete. She's a great competitor. Her coaches in club would tell you that she's a much better competitor than she is a practicer. And, and you know, that's the biggest thing for us is if we can get her to understand the value of what she does day in and day out and how that'll help transfer into her, uh, her performance continuing to get better and grow. We, you know, she, could, she has a beautiful vault. On the, the, on the day that it's on, she's got a tremendous Yurchenko one and a half. Um, but we don't see it every day. We don't see it, you know, all, we see it on days when she feels really good. And then there's days where it, it's not there. And, and so my hope is that the successes that she's feeling on bars now will then begin to kind of translate and, and we'll start to see more of that in other places because I really believe in her as a competitor. Should we expect to see any more changes in the lineup? 
this upcoming week in Arkansas? Well, there's not a lot. There's not a lot to be had at this point, you know, until we don't have a lot of uh, extra routines laying around to, to pull from right now. We're getting Bryce back. Bryce is back. She did beam yesterday, no f further adverse reactions, so she's full go today for the first time. I don't know that that means we put her in this week. I think we probably need to kind of bring her along a little more slowly and get her confidence level back up, but that certainly will help. Um, we're still probably two weeks out maybe before we really know whether, you know, what uh, Olivia's um, prognosis is on this stress. They're kind of tricky. And all you can do is try to push the doctors to look at it more times and make sure that they're staying on, on top of what, what it looks like. But that'll be a big shot in the arm when we can get her back on both uh, bars and floor. She was ready on both and fully anticipated using her this past week and then weren't able to do it. Um, so those, those two will be very big to, to get back into the mix. But, um, but right now we got what we got. And um, just, you know, Chase has it's gone in in spots and, um, and Sierra's done a good job for us on balance beam. We just gotta keep, gotta keep plugging. Yeah, I think hers is just experience. You know, I think you, again, you know, those are those are first time competitor kind of mistakes. You go real big on the first pass and then you try to overcorrect and go real easy on the second pass and you know, we just need to find that middle ground and get her comfortable. She corrected the mistake from the first time she went out and she hit her last pass. So, and the vault was it was a good vault. Her Yurchenko one and a half is a good solid vault for us. She hasn't done enough to, she sticks them all the time in here. That, that's going to happen at some point. Um, but you know, you got to, you got to let them grow. And sometimes it, you go through these years where patience is the key. You know, every, every year has its own formula. If it was easy to duplicate year over year, what would be the challenge in doing any of this? So it's, it's a different year for us. We're going to, we've, we've taken some lumps. We may still take some more. And, um, you know, you certainly don't want that to happen, but we've got to be patient and let this team grow into its, into its identity and who they are. Um, and, you know, I believe in, you know, I believe in this group. I think that, you know, given the chance and if we don't have any major setbacks that we can be re we can make some noise in March and April for sure. Well, I'd love to, but again, it goes back to, where, where do we, where do we do that? And who do we, you know, there's just not bodies right now. Um, I'd love to be able to, to find a place, but you know, there are also no easy outs on our schedule at this point. You know, we, we go to Arkansas this week, we go home for Georgia. And then uh, I think we go to Alabama and then we got Florida. So, I mean, it's like, you know, you're, you're in the, you're in the meat of the SEC schedule and you could, if you had the, the luxury of doing that, you could do it, but you would do it knowing that you were risking, you know, a potential uh, lower score or a loss. So we have to, but again, right now I don't even have that option. I don't really have much option. I can give them the rest during the week. We come back from Arkansas, they're getting two days, nothing. You know, that's where I'll be able to give them the rest, but I won't, be, I, I probably can't pull them out of meets right now. When you're talking about putting new people in and having to let them kind of work through things on on competition days, have you noticed anything from like Cammy or Kaya in practice trying to talk them through? Oh, yeah. To be ready for this yeah. I mean, those two are as much part of the heartbeat of this group as they were when they were going. I mean, they just, you know, Cammy's just, I, I've said it a lot, she's just such a bright light um, of a person. And, um, just influences everybody, just raises everybody else up around her. She's just that kind of person. She's like a, she's like a, a virtue magnet, man. She just brings out the best in every, every person that, that is around her and works hard at it and wants and relishes that role and, and wants to, wants to be a positive impact on everything we've got going. Kai has been sick from, since the surgery. I think the pain meds got her. She, she came back in the gym yesterday. It was the first we had really seen much of her. Uh, but again, same kind of same kind of individual that they re, they look to and they rely on for uh, for that calmness and and the comfort that hey we're going to be okay let's just you know keep going so yeah I mean they're they're both just they're both just great and I can't imagine not having either one of them. So given 
all the given all the injuries, what have you learned about the depth of your team? So you <laughs> say that the depth has been tested. So far. Yeah, it has. We didn't have as much depth going into this year as we did previous years. You guys heard me say that um, when we were when we were coming along. Um, so it's been it's obviously been tested, and you know there's not a lot of depth left. Um, there's a couple. I mean, you know, if we had to go one, one, one deeper or two deeper in spots, we could. But, um, you know, I, I've just been proud of the kids that w that have gotten the opportunity to step in, and they've taken advantage of it, and they've they've done it. They've done a good job. I know there's been mistakes, but um, I, I believe that you know they'll level those things out, and some of that comes with experience. A lot of them are you know going in for the first time, so they might as well be freshmen going for the first time and in areas that they have not had the experience. And, you know, I think about Sierra in particular on beam, you know, that's been tremendous. Elena on you know, assuming the taking up the mantle on three events and is next up on floor if we need her to go and is is doing a good job. And, um, you know, it's it sometimes it takes them by surprise, but uh, they've done a good job being prepared overall. Coach, we've heard a little bit about the extra security measures y'all have taken at meets. Um, but we recently heard reports that um, Ruby Dunn didn't feel safe attending class in person. Can you say anything about uh, no. what safety measures are being taken here at home? Uh, you know, those reports, I, I, I don't know where that comes from. Um, I think her, her overall, uh, her overall increased whatever you call it, you know, the increased awareness of Olivia has, has created just um, a general unsettledness when she's out in public alone. I don't think it's whether it's here or anywhere else. Um, um, but I think, uh, you know, as far as, as far as our security here at facilities and at, in the PMAC for our events, we feel good about what we have.